Grief is hard, but getting good grief support doesn't have to be. That's why I love text-based grief support from Grief Coach. For less than the price of an hour's therapy, Grief Coach sends you thoughtful tips and resources about life after loss all year long. Texts are curated by grief experts and authors and can be customized based on relationship, cause of death, and more. You also receive personalized texts for grief anniversaries and special days, and extra support around the holiday season. And if you have friends or family members who want to help you grieve but aren't sure how, you can add them to your subscription and Grief Coach will text them grief support tips and reminders of your important dates, because no one should ever have to grieve alone. Sign up for Grief Coach's text-based grief support today at grief.coach slash Shelby for Scythia. You can find a link in the show notes. Hello and welcome to Grief Book Roundup, a podcast where I introduce you to a grief book I love in 10 minutes or less. I'm Shelby Forsythia, an intuitive grief guide and author who helps grieving people come back to life after devastating loss. My mom's death in 2013 made me a student of grief, and I'm perpetually reading books related to loss, transformation, and finding your way after everything falls apart. Here, I'll share them with you. On Grief Book Roundup, I'll introduce you to grief books new and old, highlight marginalized authors and underrepresented grief stories, and remind you in whatever loss you're facing, you are not alone. Let's get to today's book. Hi there, grief growers, and thank you so much for joining me on this inaugural episode of Grief Book Roundup. The first book I have for you is my all-time favorite book, as of right now, on grief and loss. It's called On Living by Carrie Egan. And I'm not entirely sure how this book came into my life, but since 2016, since I started doing grief work, it has become a yearly read. And that's rare for me. Usually I read a book once and if I can remember the ending, I won't read it again. But with On Living, I remember the ending and I read it every single year. These chapters, these essays in this book are filled with such a beautiful blend of end of life anecdotes from Carrie Egan's work experience as a hospice chaplain. There's grounded spiritual truths in here. And there's also so many metaphors and so many conversations that she has with her patients who are dying that express the depth and lightness of what it means to be human. And throughout this book, throughout these essays on reflecting on life and reflecting on death, Carrie Egan also connects the loss experiences of her patients to her own losses, including the death of her father and an unexpected overdose of ketamine while she was giving birth to her first child and the psychosis that followed for months afterward. Topics in On Living vary from family secrets to body acceptance, but they all hang together around the common theme of impending death, this reality, this knowledge that one day all of us are going to die. And throughout this book, Egan is asking, when death is on our doorstep, what meaning do we make of our life? So if you're struggling to make meaning after a loss or are curious about the meaning that others have made of their losses, this is such a tremendous book to read. If I had to pick three words to describe this book, they would be touching, grounding, and vulnerable. Throughout the course of this book, you are not going to encounter anything super lofty or super high reaching. Instead, you're going to witness conversations that Carrie has with her patients who are dying. You are going to feel grounded in the realness and the truth and the inevitability of the fact that we all die. Mortality is a very real undercurrent in this book and also vulnerable because in these little vignettes throughout On Living, Egan kind of dips into and out of the experience of her own losses and really uses them to empathize with the patients that she serves. So just to get crystal clear on some of the losses that you'll find in On Living, loss due to death is the primary loss that's talked about in this book because all of Carrie Egan's patients are facing their own deaths and facing them very soon. However, also interwoven throughout the book is Egan's own experience of loss of identity, loss of sanity, and loss of her memory after she was unexpectedly administered ketamine while 
giving birth to her first child. There was a lot of her life and a lot of her reality that was lost to that experience. And in a strange and wonderful way, it helped her connect to her patients that much more capably. In several chapters, uh, Carrie Egan reckons with her own meaning making in tandem with her dying patients, incorporating the recent loss of her father in addition. And then uh, she also talks about loss of faith. Many of the patients that she works with rely on religion or push back against religion as they are dying. And it's really interesting to watch them grapple with that. You'll also notice that loss of faith is a common subject. And you'll also read about people losing bodily autonomy, either slowly or gradually as they age. I'll share some of my favorite quotes from the book. This one is from page 18. It reads, Every one of us will go through things that destroy our inner compass and pull meaning out from under us. Everyone who does not die young will go through some sort of spiritual crisis where we have lost our sense of what is right and wrong, possible and impossible, real and not real. Never underestimate how frightening, angering, confusing, or devastating it is to be in that place. Making meaning of what is meaningless is hard work. Soul-searching is painful. And then I'd love to share one more quote from the end of the book, and this is, gosh, one of my favorite reflections that Carrie Egan does on all of the essays that preceded and on living. She writes, I've heard people say, usually in an attempt to comfort or motivate others, or sometimes to stifle their grieving, that loss, tragedy, trauma don't define you. That, of course, is utter bullshit. Anyone who has been through a great loss or a terrible trauma already knows that the experience defines you. If there's one truth that runs through my patients' stories, it's that. At the very end of their lives, they defined themselves by the stories they chose to tell, of the hard things they had been through. So instead of being a book that turns away from trauma and says, that doesn't define you, or turns away from mortality, or turns away from grief and said, that's not going to happen right now, today, On Living is such a beautiful book that looks grief, death, loss, trauma, all the hard things that have ever happened to us right in the face and says, if all of this is true, since I have lived through all of this, what meaning do I make of my life? What am I going to call this? How does this define me? Who am I? What do I want to leave behind? So if you're struggling with meaning making, I I really encourage you to pick up this book. And if you're curious about the stories that people tell about themselves as they are dying, for those who get the luxury of knowing they are going to die, this is a really fascinating read. Thank you so much for joining me today on Grief Book Roundup. You can find a link to buy today's book in the show notes for this episode. If you'd like to submit a grief book for the show or buy one of my books on grief, visit shelbyforsythia.com. You can follow me on social media at Shelby for Scythia on Facebook and Instagram. If this podcast helped you find your next great grief read, be sure to subscribe and leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. And if someone in your life has experienced a loss, be sure to share this show with them, especially if they love to read. I'm able to purchase grief books and keep this podcast on the air thanks to my amazing Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support Grief Book Roundup on Patreon through a yearly or monthly pledge and access live grief support calls and workshops hosted by yours truly, visit patreon.com slash Shelby for Music for Grief Book Roundup is performed by Owen Phillips. Until next time, I see you. I am so proud of you and the work that you're doing in the world. And I love you. Because even through grief, we are growing.